Hey, what's up guys? So last episode what we did is that we've put our direction that we're pressing, so either the left or right, inside of that float value over here. Now in this episode we are going to move our player around using that input. In order to do that, we need to find out our, how we're supposed to move an object inside of Unity. Now there's multiple ways to do it. There is multiple ways to go about it, um, but what we're going to do since we're using a character controller is that we're going to, to use a function inside of that character controller that is called move to move our character around. And I will show you exactly how we do that right now actually. So, what we need to do first, um, if you take a look at the inspector on the right, so we have our player, our player contains a character controller, it also contains the player script that we've made. Now the information of our uh, movement is inside of that player script. And we want to use the character controller to move the player around. So we need to connect these in some kind of way. To connect these, we're going to use something called a reference. So we are going to go inside our, of our uh, player script we're going to create a fake, not a fake, but an actual um, reference to that character controller. So you go up here, you say either private or public, and we're going to make it uh, private for now. So private character controller, and we'll say this is going to be called controller. So now we have a reference to a character controller. We don't know which one just yet, but we have a reference to it. So we need to find a way to um, take this and make it point towards this character controller on top of our player. Now a simple way to do it since our player is on the same object as our character controller is to go right here in the start and we'll do controller so this value over here is now equal to get component of type character controller just like this and this is the syntax make sure you have the parentheses and the semicolon. Okay, so now we have the two of these connected. So we have our character controller connected to our player script. What are we supposed to do to move this now? Now, when exactly do we want to move? Do we want to move only once at the beginning or do we want to move every single frame? Now, of course, we want to be able to move every single frame. So let's go down here, add a new line, and we are going to write controller dot move and this is a function that takes in a vector3 motion parameter. Let's just leave it there for now. I'm going to put it in a comment because it's going to crash if we don't do that. Um, we need to define a vector3 movement. So we need to, de to define a, um, a vector3 that is going to pretty much just be our motion, so our uh, transition from point A to point B. Okay, so this is starting to get a little bit complicated, so try to follow as much uh, as possible. So uh, what I did right here is I've created a new field, so these are all fields, I've created a new field of type Vector3 because our controller that moves only takes in Vector3 uh, parameters. So if we were to go back down here, remove the comment, we can now put move vector inside of there and everything is going to work but move vector is a empty vector. Okay, so really quick, what a vector tree is, it's um, three different floats. This is really simple. It's a float, float, float value. So uh, we use this kind of a structure to determine, say, a position in the world. So where exactly is our object in the world? And then we can return three single floats like that to pinpoint exactly where it is using the x, y, and z axis. Now this is exactly what our controller that moves want. It wants us to give it a vector 3, so where exactly are you going to move in x, y, and z? Now since we're playing a 2D game, we only want to be using the x and y axis, so x for the movement left to right, and y for the movement up and down. Um, we're not going to be using the z-axis at all, I don't think so at least. If we are to use that, it's going to be a little um, additional mechanic. But for now, we need to make sure that the information we get right here in the input direction, we need to make sure that it goes inside of that move vector. So we're going to 
have to write something over here. We'll do move vector is equal, and now we need to define that move vector. Now we just said that move vector is three different floats. So we're going to go ahead and declare a new vector three. And if we take a look at this, it takes in three floats separated by commas. So let's close this off and we're going to start writing those three floats. Say zero, zero, and zero. This is for X, Y, and Z. Now we have the information we want for the X, so let's just change it. We're going to change the first float for input direction. We don't have the information for Y just yet because we're not calculating gravity um, just yet. And we know that the Z is never going to move, so we're just going to leave it like that for now and take a look at what actually happens in the game. So um, let's hit play. And as you can see down here, this is our input direction, so it's still at zero. So yeah, I press on the A, it moves on the left, and I press on D, it moves on the right. Now this is a little bit too fast, but as you can see, we can we can now move. So this is a pretty good step uh, towards having a working character controller. Just to make sure we understand what's going on, we are going to take this line over here. So this is the input direction when we uh, uh, we tell the console, okay, are we pressing, are we pressing on right, uh, left, or are we not pressing on anything? We're going to take this line and put it right below the move vector assignation. We're going to put move vector in there. So now what's going to happen is um, every frame we're going to get two different logs inside our console. The first one is going to be uh, minus one, zero, or one, so the input direction. And the second one is going to be a representation of our move vector. So as you can see over here, this is our move vector. Our player is actually moving right now. It's being, um, the, the function move is being called on top of our player, but since we're not giving it any kind of inputs, it's just not moving. It's just not doing anything. It's not having any uh, movement on top of it. But back there in the code, it's actually calling the move function. I'm going to collapse my console so I don't get spammed uh, by the same message all over again and press, say, I'm going to press the A button. As you can see, the input direction was now minus one and the resulting move vector was minus one. Same thing for the right now, one and the resulting vector was one, zero, zero. Good. So that's pretty much it for this episode, guys. We just assigned some movement to our player. Of course, it's going a little bit too fast right now, but we're going to fix this in the next episode. And we are also going to start tackling the gravity in the next episode. So guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.